What's up guys, I'm Steven and this is part two of the Eurorack Sequencer Project. Last time we designed the circuit out on a breadboard and made sure that it all worked appropriately. And then what you just saw was me building it all out in KiCad and sending it off to a PCB shop to get them made professionally. It has been about two weeks since I shot that and today on this glorious day, they've arrived. So I actually ordered two boards. The first one is actually what all the circuitry that you saw in the last video is happening on. This has the 555 timers, it has the decade calendar, it has all the potentiometers, everything you need to actually get the sound out is on this guy. But then this one, this is the thing that actually screws into your Eurorack. This is the front panel. There's actually no traces on this board at all. It's just structural and to look pretty. And I think it does. And then the idea is you take these two boards and then mount them a little bit apart from each other, probably about 10 centimeters with some standoffs and all of the potentiometers and slides and ports and all that stuff that actually makes the module work will magically come through the front of the panel PCB and then you can control it on and it all looks pretty. That matte black with the gold finish is just like, mm, it's so good. The board will be matte black with a gold finish because that is the only way to finish a circuit board. There is no better finish. Nothing will ever compare to that. That's just... Oh, it's so good. So now the last thing I need to do is solder on all the components that I used in the last video, except this time they're surface mount instead of through hole. Then plug it in and fire it up and hope to God that it works the way that I expect it to. I really hope it works. <laughs> Let's do it. So everything is done being soldered up and I have it all plugged in and I just need to turn it on and hopefully what we will get is a beautiful sequencer ready to go. Here we go. <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> that doesn't work at all. Nerds. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so here's the thought. When I turn my tempo up, the LEDs are lighting all four of them. But then when I turn it back down, only one will stay lit up. My guess is that when I turn this all the way down, like this, my duty cycle is pretty much 100% is my guess. The decade counter never actually sees the high to low change because the 555 timer is high most of the time. And then it just never steps. But then when I change it, my duty cycle changes. There's a definitive high point and low point, and then the decade counter will click through. I'm gonna hook it up to my scope and see if that's actually what's happening. I don't know. I don't know. It never works on the first try. Never. All right, so what I'm doing right now is something that I do whenever I'm trying to debug a circuit. I will step through sequentially where the logic of the circuit is moving and I try and isolate down my variable. So when I first populated this board, I just threw everything on and hoped that it worked. But now what I'm doing is I'm starting with one part and testing that and checking to make sure that works. And then if everything looks good there, then I'll pop over to the next part. And then as soon as something starts not working the way I want it to, I now know what the problem is. I've isolated down my variable and I can diagnose what the problem is way easier. And that's what we've got right over here. So what I've got wired up right now is just the first 555 timer, just the very beginning step of the whole process. And if you look at the oscilloscope right there, it looks like it's working pretty well. So this is our tempo and that's working out okay. Now I'm gonna move on to adding the decade counter. And as long as that's working, we'll move on to the last 555 timer. Eventually find something wrong then fix it okay I figured it out so I was right that the decade counter wasn't getting triggered correctly but it wasn't because the duty cycle was really big it was because when the 555 timer was putting its pulse out to trigger it and have it step it was actually like this really gross fuzzy start and that totally messed with the decade counters head and it just like didn't know what to do with that and so it didn't work at all and the reason for that is because I forgot to add my decoupling cap for those of you that don't know, a decoupling cap just goes between power and ground. And a capacitor is kind of like a little mini battery. It helps kind of like even out voltage, make sure everything kind of runs smoothly. So putting a capacitor or a decoupling cap across voltage and ground, make sure that your power stays really steady. Apparently on 555 timers, if you don't do this, then your rising edge, suddenly it pulls all this power and then your power line will dip a little bit. And then you get this really gross fuzzy start. 
but once you add the decoupling cap, oh, it works absolutely beautifully. Let me show you what the difference is. So this is the nice clean edge with the decoupling cap, and this is it without. Look at all that gross, gnarly start. Ugh. So that's what I was giving my decade counter, and it was like, what the frick are you giving me? All right, so now that I fixed that problem, I still don't have any sound coming out. Anyway, I'm gonna continue with my process, continue to add things in. Eventually, I will find out what is keeping me from enjoying my lovely new sequencer. All right, this one's pretty embarrassing. The switches that I'm using to turn on and off all my beats are just not the right ones, <laughs> like at all. <laughs> Ah! I just like check continuity on them as a gut check, and there was no continuity when you click them in and out. No change! So my signal was just getting blocked by the switch. And I heard a little buzz coming out of it after I just shorted one, so I'm pretty sure we're set to go. I'm gonna fix these switches, just short them out for now and get different switches later, and then we can finally hear what this thing sounds like after so much time trying to debug it. works! Man, this one was like pulling teeth trying to get it to work. I did so many things wrong trying to spin this board up. Oof! I think what this is teaching me is I just need to spend more time looking at my boards before I order them. It is not worth the heartache to design it poorly and just try and get it out the door so I can get boards quickly and then pull my hair out trying to get it to work. I need to just spend the time to design them the right way, the first time. But we got there, and now I have a sick new sequencer. Oops. Minus one knob. I kind of like it with no sound, just kind of blipping through like this. Isn't that cool? Ah, oh, I love it. I still have a couple kinks to work out, like the CV doesn't quite work right. My duty cycle on my signal is really, really high, so no matter what values I pick from my low-pass filter, it's just pretty much giving me 12 volts, which makes sense. So I gotta figure out how I wanna do that. That'll probably need a board revision to fix, but that's for the next one. Also, the music that you just heard came from this. That little track was actually made on this guy in conjunction with some other stuff I threw in there too. I'm thinking about doing a small production run of a new version of these boards with all the lessons that I learned from V1. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in picking one of those up. All right guys, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you have not already, and I'll see you next time.